rely on the Rahim. So last time somebody requested for two presentations. Uh, one was lithium, other was clozapine. Uh, the third one was ECT. So I already covered ECT with lots of details. So I won't be covering that. Again, if you people feel that you want to talk about some other topic, you can just get back to me, send me a text message, and I will try to cover the other topic, whatever is related. I prepared something else, but that is still pending. Again, I will uh, say the same thing. I am trying to cover up the topics that are not covered in your academic departments. Usually, I try to cover the topics which are unusual and will help you in exam but of course your choice and priority is the key if we have to move forward i forwarded one uh, mcq booklet today uh, although again not a copyright thing uh, it was off the record uh, again book but i hope you people got it and just go through that. Kisi wa time lega to we will cover those MCQs as well. Okay, so last time when I was covering lithium, uh, it was a complex presentation for me myself as well. So I never recited any poetry, but today I will start with this. Kabi is tarah mere ham safar sabi chahate mere naam kar. Agar ho sake to kabi kahi mere naam bhi koi sham kar. मेरे दिल के साय में आ जरा मेरी धड़कनों में कयाम कर ये जो मेरे लफ्जों के फूल हैं तेरे रास्ते की ये धूल हैं कभी इनसे सुन मेरी दास्तां कभी इनके साथ कलाम कर सो वी हैव टू टॉक एंड टॉक अबाउट क्लोजपीन सो द ट्रायल ऑफ क्लोजपीन शुड बी कंसीडर्ड इन ऑल पेशेंट्स विद ट्रीटमेंट रेजिस्टेंट स्किज़ोफ्रेनिया uh, it show titration of clozapine and gradual tapering of the pre-clozapine and pre-psychotics is strongly recommended. So what is recommended is that if somebody is on other antipsychotic benzodiazepines and mood stabilizer medications, we have to make sure that any drug which he or she, the person is taking, should not interact with clozapine. So all the drugs which have drug-drug interaction with clozapine should be tapered off first and slowly tapered off. And the clozapine is built up slowly and gradually. In most of the countries of the world, we have clozeril monitoring patient system, CPMS, clozeril patient monitoring system. Uh, but in Pakistan, when the Novartis was there, the CPMS program was there. Now, most of the time, uh, the local manufacturers uh, in Pakistan who are providing clozapine, uh, they don't have CPMS. So it's the responsibility entirely of a psychiatrist to make sure that they should monitor. I have more than 132 people on clozapine, and I believe it's a wonderful drug uh, if it is uh, given to people uh, who where the indication is appropriate uh, if this if this is given without an indication some people try to give it in a low dosage in other uh, indications not which are approved by various again uh, agencies then things are a little bit complicated i hope all of you can hear me hear me kahin pe awaaz ruke to please zarur bata dijiyega so yes, we can yeah so indications now there are various kinds of definitions available uh, for treatment resistant schizophrenia uh, but clozapine indication for patients with persistent positive symptoms if a person is having positive symptoms for 2 years 2 years and he is on various antipsychotics and the positive symptoms are not addressed clozapine is indicated. If the positive symptoms are definitely persistent for more than five years, clozapine is definitely indicated. So warranted and required, if you feel 
that you have given enough antipsychotic medication trials to treat the positive symptoms of schizophrenia for more than two years, then you can start clozapine. But if a person is having symptoms for more than five years and various antipsychotics have been tried, then it is required that you should shift the person on clozapine. This is one of the criteria given by again some in some textbooks. Another criteria is one, persistent positive symptoms, as we discussed earlier, and second, two adequate trials of other antipsychotics. Now the word is adequate, and sometimes it is uh, not accepted as it is. First, what is the definition of treatment resistant schizophrenia? I won't go into that detail, but for clozapine, two adequate trials. Now, adequate trials means that the drug was given in an appropriate therapeutic dosage. The patient was able to tolerate the drug for therapeutic trial of duration. If the therapeutic trial failure was because of intolerance, even then it is a trial of antipsychotic. So if, if you are giving uh, somebody uh, risperidone, and you are increasing it gradually, and you have pushed it up to six milligrams per day, and suddenly patient develops NMS or something related like tardive dyskinesia. There is a suspicion that patient is developing tardive dyskinesia, or the patient is not tolerating the drug otherwise, then definitely that is a therapeutic trial. So remember that the requirement for therapeutic trials. So the question, I will go through that. Duration of an adequate trial of any drug. Yes, so this is what I want to emphasize. The duration of adequate trial, as I mentioned, if somebody is, if you have seen a patient with schizophrenia, he comes to you, you start say, hello, Peridol. You have given him one milligrams, two milligrams, four milligrams, and by the time you are pushing it up slowly, to reach to a therapeutic dose range, which for uh, haloperidol now is around seven to 10 milligrams per day, he develops certain intractable side effects, like he, there is a suspicion of dystonia or tardive dyskinesia, and the patient is not able to tolerate, the trial is complete. Second, if the patient was given 10 milligrams of haloperidol per day for a period of six weeks, so adequate therapeutic dosage for a period of six weeks to three months, and there is no significant improvement in positive and negative symptoms, then it is a trial which is complete. So in, as a whole, when a patient comes to me and I'm seeing that this person is suffering from schizophrenia, I start him on usually on risperidone or olanzapine, push it up to risperidone to six to eight milligrams per day or olanzapine 15 to 20 milligrams per day. If the symptoms are addressed in six weeks to three months, then I'm fine. If not, then we say that the there is a failure of the therapeutic trial. So three months on a medication, on an appropriate therapeutic dosage, no significant improvement, significant improvement. If there is a partial response, then we have to augment, start using the strategies to augment uh, the treatment trial. But if there is no response, then that trial is complete. If there is a partial response, you add various kinds of psychosocial interventions, you add various kinds of C comorbidities, address them, and even then, if the patient is not improving in three to six months time, the trial is a failure. So I always tell, tell it to my patient that it will take you at least six months to nine months to be better on with schizophrenia, symptoms of schizophrenia. Three months, one trial, three months, next trial, and then the clozapine adjusted appropriately. This is very ideal. Usually it is not like that, but Ideally speaking, this is what we should be doing. 
but there are so many ifs and buts. Patient is not having compliance, or there are other complications associated with tolerability, um, regularity of the follow-ups, and again, how much the patient is willing to take the treatment. So many ifs and buts, and we have to adjust all of them. So one treatment option is with what I mentioned earlier, at least two years uh, of positive symptoms warranted more than five years positive symptoms clozapine is indicated second two adequate trials of other antipsychotic then there is another way of looking at it this is called texas medication algorithm project for antipsychotics which says step one trial of single sta second generation antipsychotic partial uh, or non-responsive, step two, try a different antipsychotic. Partial or non-response, step three is clozapine. So this is another way of looking at the same thing. Whenever we are giving the antipsychotic medications and there is a tendency in people to prescribe polypharmacy. So when you are seeing a person with schizophrenia, uh, you have given him, uh, say, olanzapine, 20 milligrams, and you feel that there is a partial response, all the symptoms are not addressed appropriately. What usually people do is add, again, valproate to enhance the serum levels, add a mood stabilizer or an antidepressant, uh, SSRI, or other drugs. Now, all of these combinations, which we try to do, is to enhance efficacy, broaden into less responsive domains, optimizing D2 occupancy, access other receptors, or doses versus adverse events. So we want to make sure that if I'm giving olanzapine to somebody, usually I don't go beyond 20 milligrams per day, which is indicated in most of the prescribing guidelines. But just to avoid the side effects, I feel that the 20 milligrams is appropriate. If the patient is tolerating it well and there the side effects are managed as well, there are some instances when I go beyond 30 milligrams of lenzapine as well. So if there is a partial response. Instead of going for a polypharmacy, I will try to push it up to 30 milligrams as well. If there is a partial response and maybe I will get the response. Now, this is tricky, and most of the time it's a clinical judgment whether you want to give a smaller dosage of multiple medications or you want to push up one medication to an appropriate therapeutic level, go for the blood work, see the therapeutic levels. If you want to adjust any other thing, do that. It's a clinical responsibility. But of course, this is unfortunately a tricky situation and varies from person to person, clinical setting to clinical setting, multiple other psychosocial and biological factors as well. Monotherapy, minimum two sequential antipsychotic monotherapy failures, at least one which should be non-clozapine, second generation antipsychotic. Now this is important, right? Establishing optimized dosing and adequate duration, which is more than three weeks, different drug target profiles tried. So the receptor occupancy comes here. And there was an MCQ. Uh, how do you want to prescribe clozapine uh, medication if the receptor occupancy is not addressed appropriately? So that is a question. And of course, why can't we change the antipsychotic or augment with another drug beyond 20 milligram less MP? So in that case, yes. We can do that, as I mentioned earlier, that it depends from person to person and clinical setting to clinical setting. Trial with clozapine monotherapy at optimized dose and adequate duration. Now, optimized dose of clozapine. Most of the books say that the optimal dose for clozapine is anything between 200 to 800 milligrams per day. When I started practicing in psychiatry, the dose of clozapine was 1200 milligrams per day. But at that time, even risperidone was given up to 24 milligrams per day. Now, risperidone is not uh, recommended beyond six to eight milligrams per day. 
And now clozapine is usually not recommended beyond 800 milligrams per day. So things do change over the period of time with the various trials, various studies, various, uh, again, uh, neuroimaging technologies and blood investigations, these things do change. Trial with clozapine, optimal dose should be anything between 400 to 800 milligrams per day, monotherapy, monotherapy, not polypharmacy. And before attempting, again, going for augmentation or adding the polypharmacy, just review the diagnosis, establish proper adherence, check for any comorbid substance intake, and then go for other antipsychotic medications or add on psychotropics before you fail it. So clozapine is a atypical antipsychotics used in treatment resistant schizophrenia. Patients intolerant to other antipsychotics. So if the person starts developing tardive dyskinesia or intractable Parkinsonian symptoms, or the patient is not able to tolerate because of multiple other reasons, then you can change to clozapine. Drug-induced psychotic disorders occurring during the treatment of Parkinson's disease. So most of these Second generation antipsychotics can also call, give rise to some Parkinsonism like symptoms, and clozapine is considered to be the safest of all. In patients developing NMS, clozapine is considered to be the safest. In patients developing hyperprolactinemia, uh, again, clozapine is considered to be the safe choice. Some off license indications, for example, delusional disorders, but obviously, I won't go for it. So I hope I have answered your question. Why can't we change the antipsychotic or augment with another drug beyond 20 milligrams of lenzapine? We can augment or change antipsychotic, yes, but depends on the situation. Most of the time we prefer that we should go on a monotherapy rather than polypharmacy. Uh, might be a silly question, why not clozapine in the first instance then? Okay. Okay, now you see why clozapine is not given as a first drug. Since the time the clozapine was launched back in 1940 sometimes, so this was actually uh, 40s or 50s when clozapine actually was introduced as an antihypertensive medication. And then of course it has no antihypertensive properties, so it was actually withdrawn. And then the pharmaceutical company thought that it should be given some other uh, indications. And later on, they realized that it's a good drug to treat psychosis. In the beginning, it was given uh, as a first line treatment as well, because probably it was an old antipsychotic and old medication in the, in the, in the industry. So they thought that why not to try it as a first drug? But then people started developing some side effects, which are intractable side effects like agranulocytosis and uh, platelet count was getting compromised and people were having postural hypertension, people were having hypersalivation. These are common side effects of clozapine. You probably might all know about them. So then they withdraw it from the market. So it was shut down and for almost 10 to 12 years, the clozapine was not prescribed, it was not available in the market. Then it was relaunched back in mid 70s, I suppose, when the clozapine was relaunched as an antipsychotic medication with CPMS, clozapine Mon patient monitoring system. And Novartis, uh, which was the company which uh, launched it again uh, across the globe, they were having CPMS system even now in the developed countries. Uh, that is the only drug available, clozapine, through Novartis, and the patient have to follow CPMS, which is a long bulk of papers. It's such a big bulk of papers that even when I am filling it up, it takes me at least an hour to fill it up. I have to have a absolute pure uh, examination of the patient, pure indication for the patient, make sure that the cardiovascular system is correct, 
make sure that he is not suffering from any comorbidities and if there are any comorbidities then i have to mention them as well i want to make sure the family physician is involved as well and i want to make sure that other specialists are involved in the treatment as well so it's not what is very much common in pakistan that anybody can get the clozapine from the market go the pay the price and get it no it has a very stringent criteria of evaluation and monitoring now when people have to go for so much of a paperwork and so much of the things then they don't prescribe it as a first line treatment as an antipsychotic one second this is one of the reasons there are multiple other reasons then second reason is that usually clozapine uh, when it is labeled as a drug for a resistant schizophrenia which means that the two adequate trials have been given first line drug it is not prescribed because you are actually trying to compromise the patient's long term outcome as well when once the patient is on clozapine any patient even in pakistan if you see some prescription of a patient with clozapine you absolutely understand that this person was given some medications for which it is not no response was achieved and the patient develops resistant schizophrenia and then you have to try the clozapine so it is considered to be one of the drug option when other drugs options fail if i see a schizophrenia patient and the first time and then i prescribe them uh, clozapine uh, as a first line drug this means that i am labeling the patient one uh, resistant schizophrenia two i am labeling the patient as a patient who is non responsive schizophrenia three i am labeling the patient that for lifelong he has to be on this medication and we won't be able to reduce the dosage we won't be able to compromise and we don't know the comorbidities as well or biopsychosocial model things as well so the tricky part is the tricky part is once the patient is on clozapine then it's for life you cannot stop clozapine any time in life well risperidone a number of number of times you might have seen that people do go off on risperidone uh, and they do go well as well so that is that is the answer to your question i suppose when we talk about clozapine again it has a sedative actions and the weight gain properties through histaminergic receptors uh, it has a postural drop again mcqs postural drop due to alpha 1 uh, receptors a muscarinic receptors anticholinergic actions um, m1 and m3 5ht2a and d2 hit and run d2 hit and run means that multiple times it's not only d2 it is other neurotransmitters as well so we'll talk about them as well so it has an efficacy on histaminergic muscarinic 1 alpha 1 alpha 2 dopamine 1 2 3 4 5 hd 7 5 hd 6 5 hd 3 5 hd 2 c 5 hd 2 a and 5 hd 1 a now all of these neurotransmitters have their own uh properties so some neurotransmitter is related to the postural drop some neurotransmitters are related to the sexual problems some neurotransmitters are related to weight gain as i mentioned so i may be able to touch all of them let's see okay so we know again the pathways for schizophrenia prefrontal cortex again uh, mesocortical mesolimbic nigrostriatal and tubero infundibular pathways of the dopamine and whenever we want to cover these dopamine pathways uh, mesocortical is uh, ventro tegmental anterior lobe and prefrontal cortex mesolimbic is vta and nac nigrostriatal is from substantia nigra to uh, again uh, globus uh, striatum and tubero infundibular is to that pathway now uh, basal ganglia hypothalamus uh, infundibulum 
all of these areas are related to other functionalities as well. Like prefrontal cortex uh, is involved in obsessive symptoms as well. It is involved in memory and processing as well. It is involved in other areas. Similarly, if you talk about hypothalamus, it controls at least 14 psychotropic factors in our body and multiple neurotropic hormones released from the hypothalamus. So when you are hitting one organ as a whole, hypothalamus, you're actually compromising so many other body organs as well. We want to be very specific when we are treating psychosis, but unfortunately, when the, when the need is to be on a clozapine, all of these uh, areas are hit and clozapine touches all of them. So clozapine, some historical facts, the first of the atypical antipsychotics to be developed. Clozapine was developed by Sandoz in 1961. It was first introduced in Europe in 1971, but was voluntarily withdrawn by the manufacturer in 1975. After it was shown to cause a granulocytosis in 1989. So I'm sorry, I, whatever the dates I mentioned earlier, they were a little bit compromised. In 1989, after studies demonstrated that it was more effective than any other antipsychotics for treating schizophrenia, it was relaunched. The FDA approved clozapine use but only FDA approval is only for treatment resistant schizophrenia. No off label indication were there. Nearly one third of severe schizophrenics who were given new drug improved significantly. Now this paper was published in 1987 and clozapine was relaunched in the market in 1989. And this paper is absolutely suggested of our it is a major advance. Dr. Melzer said that the annual meeting of the APA, the finding of the study of the Melzer case, Western Reserve University in Cleveland and John Kane. So Kane and Melzer are considered to be one of the leading people in the treatment strategies of schizophrenia. And when they published this, these papers, there was a definite huge impact more than uh, 300,000 Americans uh, were tried on clozapine in uh, schizophrenia patients. And the response was a study, a huge study, a huge project. So the clozapine actually is, as I mentioned earlier, that it is having an impact on multiple neurotransmitters, multiple neurotransmitters, as you can see here. It has strong antagonism for D4 receptors, another MCQ. It has antagonist effect on D4, weak antagonist on D1, D2, D3, and D5, dopamine receptor subtypes. And all of these areas, mesocortical, mesolimbic, nigrostriatal, tuberoinfantilar pathways, all are affected because of its propensity to, again, have a minor weak antagonism of D1, 2, 3, and 5, and strong antagonism at D4. So all the pathways which are carrying the dopamine are practically blocked. Then it has chemical message, presynaptic receptor sensitivity, postsynaptic. It blocks alpha adrenergic histaminergic H1 and cholinergic receptors. Again, which is not required as such in schizophrenia, so it causes the side effects. It gives the side effects. Pharmacodynamics and kinetics. The absorption of clozapine is almost complete, but the bioavailability is 50 to 60 percent. 50 to 60 percent because of the first pass metabolism. I hope. You all know about the first pass metabolism. So when the drug is taken, it is absorbed into the liver. It goes from the enterohepatic circulation back again to the uh, intestines and then reabsorbed. And this enterohepatic uh, metabolism loses some of the drug. So clozapine is reduced to 50 or 60 percent when it reaches the brain. Peak concentration is 2.5 hours and the food does not appear to have effect on the bioavailability. Most of my patients always ask, especially in Pakistan, uh, how should we take the drug? Uh, and again, there was a joke as well, but I don't want to quote that joke. 
कि दवाई कैसे खानी है सो so, दवाई जो है वो खाने से पहले खानी है खाने के बाद खानी है सोने से पहले खानी है सोने के बाद खानी है नाश्ते से पहले खानी है नाश्ते के बाद दीज आर ट्री की क्वेश्चन आई ऑलवेज टेल दैम टेक द ड्रॉग any time you want to but it should be at least 3 hours prior to going go to bed why 3 hours because you will take the drug from here it will go into the stomach it will go into the liver it will go into the brain it will take 2 to 3 hours before it starts effect but most of the people say that we take the medications and go off to sleep because it is on our in our head so maybe it's more psychological than it's anything else i hope i'm clear in that anybody any question अगर कोई क्वेश्चन हो तो प्लीज डू लेट आस्क मी द एलिमिनेशन हाफ लाइफ इज ट्वेल्व आवर्स सो क्लाजीन हैज टू बी गिवन एन बी आई डी डोजेज बट आफ्टर थ्री मंथस ऑन क्लाजीन थेरेपी द साइकल इन द सिस्टम इज डेवलप्ड इन सच अ वे दैट दिस हाफ लाइफ इंक्रीजेस बिकॉज ऑफ द फैटी एब्जॉर्बन मोर देन ट्वेल्व आवर्स सो आफ्टरवर्स यू कैन गिव इट वंस अ डे in the beginning it has to be prescribed twice a day in divided dosage morning evening gradually after 3 months you can shift it to only the evening dosage if the patient stabilizes the cytochrome p450 isoenzyme 1a2 another mct the uh, pharmacokinetics of uh, clozapine uh, this is again cytochrome p450 1a2 in the liver is primarily responsible for clozapine metabolism agents that induce like why patients on clozapine smoke more cigarettes they want to smoke more cigarettes because the nicotine can actually reduce the serum levels of clozapine and less of the side effects of the clozapine so they smoke more because they don't want hypersalivation they want don't want postural hypotension they don't want the sedative effect so nicotine actually stimulates and reverts the some of the bioavailability of the clozapine which is unfortunately a tricky so when i ask my patient who is suffering from schizophrenia that you are smoking and you have to cut down your smoking they don't want to if they are on clozapine they want to smoke more and more because they feel more relaxed as the side effects of the clozapine are less because the levels of the clozapines are less as well uh, so or inhibit for example theophylline ciprofloxacin and fluoxamine cytochrome p450 1a2 may increase or decrease respectively the metabolism of clozapine so always remember smoking nicotine uh, theophylline ciprofloxacin fluoxamine they reduces the levels of clozapine the induction of metabolism caused by smoking means the smokers require up to double up the dose of clozapine compared with non smokers to achieve an equivalent plasma concentration now in the smokers the dose will be more and as compared to non smokers because this is what is causing the problem always remember another mcq excretion is in urine 50% and feces 30% so which is absolutely fine there are questions no okay uh contraindications so contraindications hypersensitivity to clozapine history of agranulocytosis uncontrolled epilepsy clozapine reduces the threshold for the seizure so any patient who is taking clozapine make sure that you have to monitor for eeg for seizure activity as well if the person is having a seizure activity this never means that you cannot give clozapine to resistant schizophrenia you can but then you have to add on some drug that can control the seizures most of the time the seizure threshold is at the peak when the clozapine has 400 mg level so at around 3 to 400 mg per day i always add an anticonvulsant to clozapine therapy if there is a even a minor chance that patient may develop a seizure it will address two things one it will address the possibility of reduction the reducing the uh, again chances of having a seizure second it will augment 
the effect of clozapine. It may increase the serum levels of clozapine and it may give good boost in the mood stabilizing effect as well. Uncontrolled epilepsy, severe central nervous system or depression or comatose state, clozapine is contraindicated. Paralytic ileus, well, you all know, we cannot give any medications in the patients with paralytic ileus. And myeloproliferative disorders or use with other agents that have a well-known risk for agranulocytosis or bone marrow suppression. So you cannot give clozapine. These are absolute contraindications. The rest of them are relative contraindications. So somebody said something. Nicotine, yes, smoking. Clozapine pe direct effect karta hai. Concentration pe ye through cytochrome enzyme ka through by increasing metabolism drug because smoking is, yeah, of course. This is one of the mechanism. So because uh, nicotine uh, definitely uh, is metabolized through the cytochrome enzyme system as well. So this is one possibility, but it is not the only possibility. There are other possibilities and I'm coming to that as well. Uh, how about male and female? Is there any difference in clozapine metabolism for male and female? Well, now as such, there are, I was just trying to go through this, is these type of studies long time ago, not recently. I could not find any significant studies mentioning that the dose differences are there in male to female. Uh, usually female requires less dosage, not because that they are females, because they have less BMI. They have, uh, they are having stature is relatively shorter, body is relatively thin and slim, and relatively uh, smoking is not there, or alcoholism is not there. So they need relatively less amount of dosage, but it's not like, there is not other differences as compared to male and female. Theophylline and fluoxamine, yes, inhibitors. So they increase clozapine levels. Yes, yes, absolutely. They disrupt the clozapine levels and then the effect of clozapine, unfortunately, is compromised. And the maximum therapeutic doses in male and female, as I mentioned in the beginning, the levels could be, the drug dose range could be anything between 200 to 800 milligrams per day. Previously, it was up to 1200. Now we don't go beyond 800. A drug interaction. So any drug that increases QT interval may cause ventricular arrhythmias and clozapine should not be combined with any of the drugs. It includes antihematics. It includes other antipsychotics. It includes other antidepressants, some of the antidepressants, not all of them. So any drug which have an effect on the QT prolongation should not be given with clozapine. Ideally, ideally, what is mechanism of pneumonia in patients taking clozapine while it's psychosolution? Oh, that's a tricky question. I'll come back to that question. Just remind me. So drug interactions with metoclopramide, antimatics, you cannot give it with clozapine because they may enhance the adverse and toxic effects of antipsychotics. Macrolide antibiotics should not be given with clozapine. Any drug which is having a tendency of cytochrome 1A2 inhibitor may decrease the metabolism. Substrates, for example, theophylline, ciprofloxacin, fluoxamine, I have already mentioned, they increases the levels of uh, clozapine. Uh, I think the question was, uh, yes, so they increase the levels of uh, clozapine. Yes, I'm right. Carbamazepine may increase the metabolism of clozapine. Uh, carbamazepine, because it's an enzyme inducer uh, and it enhances the enzyme, but it may increase the metabolism of clozapine. So, Clozapine levels goes down. Benzodiazepines may enhance the adverse effect because unfortunately, because of the effect of the sedation, mostly. Anti-Parkinsonism drugs, dopamine agonist, antipsychotics atypical, may diminish the therapeutic effect of anti-Parkinsonism agents. So anticholinergic drugs, anti-Parkinsonian drugs, usually have drug interaction with clozapine, as mentioned because of the uh, again, receptors occupancy, 
so they should not they should be avoided a granulocytosis siege na major side effects a granulocytosis out of 132 people that my clients are are on clozapine i believe i have seen only one who developed a granulocytosis in literature is it, it is reported between 1 to 2% a granulocytosis so it's not a very common side effect but because it's a very complicated side effect so it's a black box warning seizures a uh, number of my patients who have epilepsy and they are on uh, clozapine you have to monitor you have to be careful you have to make sure that you have uh, again covering all the aspects and you are not focused just on clozapine myocarditis this is unfortunately a very tricky side effect only one of my patient developed myocarditis out of number of people that i have prescribed no she is not on uh, clozapine anymore uh but again this was a rare side effect which happened so if i am vigilant if i am careful then i'll be able to pick it up and would be able to correct it if i am not vigilant and not very careful i will miss it ecg nahi karunga test nahi karunga baki test nahi karunga so main miss kar jaunga miss kar jaunga complication ho jayegi uh cardiovascular and respiratory effects orthostatic hypotension is another side effect cardiac arrest uh, respiratory arrest side effect interaction with benzodiazepines increased mortality in elderly patients with dementia now this is again unfortunate that sometimes people do feel that it can be given to people with dementia as well no it cannot be because it's a di benzodiazepine which is a derivative of one of the benzodiazepine ring and i will be very very careful in giving it to elderly people with uh, dementia or any other any other indication that is off label uh, what is the mechanism okay pneumonia we will talk about it. how to respond with patients if they ask have hirschsprung's disease can i take it how to ask Hirschsprung's disease again. I don't remember exactly what was the cause of Hirschsprung's disease, but I I believe it's really that uh, uh, again uh, the intestine is swollen up, right? So that is, of course, if somebody is having gut problem like this, like paralytic ileus, or uh, again something related to it, like malabsorption syndrome or something, I'll be careful about giving clozapine. But if if the person is already on clozapine and he develops some kind of a again a problem related to the stomach then i have to review whether i have to continue with the clozapine or not but in exam situation i will definitely say that if a person is having something like hirschsprung disease or paralytic ileus or something like that i will not prescribe clozapine it is one of the again uh, contraindications to people so preferably this should not be given monitoring strategy for clozapine associated cardiomyopathy initiation of uh, clozapine we should be going for full cardiac history and this is another reason why people in pakistan miss it because cpms is not there here we have to report it we have to do a cardiac examination and if there is any cardiac history i have to mention it in the forms before prescribing it so which is tricky so that is definitely there i have to do the physical examination i have to do the weight vital signs cbc with differential cmp weight fasting lipid panel fasting glucose orthostatic blood pressure baseline ecg if clinically indicated now these are the baseline investigations uh i'm i i don't know most of the psychiatrists they don't go for the baseline investigation whenever a patient comes to me starting any any psychotics i will definitely ask them to get these investigations done uh, people feel surprised as well because as a psychiatrist when i am writing so many investigations they always feel problematic but this is one of the requirement this is the basic as a baseline to start any any psychotic in a patient with psychosis we should have ecg we should have be some of the symptoms because we have to make sure that the patient won't suffer from metabolic syndrome afterwards in life and if we have to correct it we have to give this uh, this these tests to the person routine follow up every 3 months if possible cardiac review of symptoms 
like dyspnea, edema, and fatigue, three of the main symptoms. If I see that my patient is getting dyspnea or having edema feed, or they, get a, they are getting fatigued quite often, I will definitely go for cardiac assessment again. I order ECG, echocardiogram, chest radiograph, consult with cardiology, and if this is clozapine induced cardiomyopathy, then I will definitely discontinue clozapine. But if it is not clozapine induced cardiomyopathy, and if the cardiologist said the pathology was something else, and now the patient develops cardiomyopathy, I will definitely continue with. But in most of the patients, I will definitely rule that out. Uh, it is because of age and cytosis because monitoring super ICP and person is always supplied by hospital pharmacy. So do not know the system. So sharing the patient will say, like, get pregnant, what should be done? <laughs> okay, so both the questions. One, Dr. Saab, if you are not working in Pakistan, you don't know. Pakistan may is work clozapine ke at least uh, 14 brands available, hai. 14 by different 14 names and it is not supplied through the CPMS in Pakistan. So anybody can write clozapine without any CPMS monitoring and the pharmacy will give them the clozapine. This is unfortunate, but this is true. Uh, our ministry is a lot of focus on costing. It is a lot of vital devices like lithium, carbonate, not available in the available market mein because the pricing ministry is not going to Basic devices, benzodiazepines, बहुत पाबंदी है, controlled है, ये है, वो है. लेकिन जब जरूरत होती है, तब भी नहीं मिलती, which is again unfortunate. और यहाँ, unfortunately, clozapine freely available है. Anybody can go and just get it from the pharmacy without any much of the problem. Any brand of the clozapine, unfortunately, CPMS monitoring is unfortunately uh, not there in Pakistan anymore. Till the time Novartis was there, it was there. Now it's no more there. Common side effects of clozapine. Sedation is 21%. 21% of the people, not every person. So one out of five will complain of sedation. Tachycardia is 17%. One of every sixth patient will complain of tachycardia. So we have to check the pulse very frequently. Constipation only 16%, dizziness 14%, hypotension 13%, fever 13%, siloria 13%, hypertension 12%, headache 10%. These are the common side effects of the clozapine. For siloria, the hypersalivation, people say that when we are sleeping, this is again very tricky. When I was giving clozaril, to my patients, the siloria was less. When I started prescribing the local brands, the siloria is more commonly seen. I don't know, it's maybe I'm wrong or there is something else wrong, but this is what the problem is. Original clozapine was giving only 13% siloria, means one in six patients complain of siloria. And if that patient is complaining of siloria, what I used to do was, to give them atropine eye drops, which is a local anticholinergic, and I will ask them to put three to four drops in mouth before going off to bed, and it will take care of hypersalivation. This is one of these strategies, which is very effective and uh, working well. I have seen people giving anticholinergic medication. Well, anticholinergics are contraindicated with clozapine, so don't prescribe procyclidine, amantadine, or anti-Parkinson drugs with clozapine. Otherwise, they will develop serious side effects. Even in the exam situation, this is the question, and you should remember, don't prescribe anticholinergics with clozapine because it will have the same receptor occupancy. Clozapine has a high receptor occupancy of anticholinergic properties. It, they will enhance, and patient will collapse, and maybe develop a cardiomyopathy and die. So be careful about it. Always be careful. And again, when I am uh, asking in that group time and again not to discuss about the drugs because you people see your seniors writing these drugs, but they have experience. You don't have. Uh, don't experiment on your patients. They are patients. They are humans. Don't do 
go for uh, again polypharmacy. Recommendation for clozapine titration for inpatients start on 25 milligrams. So usually if I have to be very careful, I start in 12.5 milligrams per day and then I increase it every fourth day, 12.5 milligrams till the time I'm achieving 300 milligrams of dose range. Or the second strategy is increase 25 milligrams per day up to 100 milligrams per day in, uh, in a second week. So, and the third, increase 50 milligrams per day up to 300 to 450 milligrams per day. So the dose titration varies. Ideal dose titration is 25 milligrams to 50 milligrams in the first week, 50 to 100 milligrams in the second week, 100 to 300 milligrams in the third week. This is ideal, but of course, depending upon the patients, depending upon how frequently you are seeing the patient, you can go slower or you can go quicker. This is for inpatient psychiatry. Inpatient psychiatry means the patient is admitted and you are supervising the patient every day. So you can give 25 milligrams to 50 milligrams first week, 100 milligrams second week, and 300 milligrams third week, but that is inpatient psychiatry. In outpatient, this will definitely go down. Maybe 12.5 to 25 milligrams per week, maybe 25 to 50 milligrams per week, going up to 300 to 450 milligrams per day. Always remember, go up to the therapeutic levels. The antipsychotic effect won't come soon. Precautions while titrating clozapine. Dose increases no more than once or twice a week. Hafte mein do din dawai banani hai. 12.5 milligrams on day one, 25 milligrams on day three or four, and then 75 milligrams on day eight, and then 100 milligrams on day 12 or 13. So push, keep pushing it up till the time you reach the, uh, again, uh, effect. Uh, once a week, it should not be more than 100 milligrams. Uh, 100 milligrams per week is the maximum you should increase, not more than that. Once the patient is on a 300, you can go a little bit faster, only in situations when their patient is inpatient. Cautious titration and dividing the doses minimizes the risk. Okay, any more questions? Stable on patients get pregnant. Okay, yes, no question. So, one was pneumonia and second was pregnancy. Okay, we'll talk about both of them. Clozapine, bioactivation, demethylation, and oxidation. This is, again, one of the MCQs that I put here. Clozapine actually is, uh, does bioactivation, demethylation, and N oxidation. Demethylation into desmethylclozapine, and desmethylclozapine is actually the drug which is having helpful effects in schizophrenia as well. So both the forms are therapeutically active. Clozapine induced hypersalivation. Now pneumonia developing. Mechanism of clozapine induced hypersalivation. M4 muscarinic receptor agonism. Alpha 2 receptor antagonism. Unopposed beta adrenoreceptor activity secondary to alpha-1 and alpha-2 antagonism, and decrease laryngeal peristalsis, decrease swallowing via reduction of GI motility. Got the answer, Doctor? Now, developing class, people who are on clozapine, and if they develop a pneumonia, there is a possibility that either they are given the drug, some other drug, which is causing decrease the laryngeal peristalsis and reduction of DHEI motility and pneumonia. I haven't seen this side effect in all the patients that I have uh, given clozapine. Uh, again, this is one of the side effects, yes. Very, very rarely reported. And if your patient develops this side effect, this means that you haven't evaluated the patient at the initiation of clozapine. Your mistake, not patient's mistake, not drug mistake, your mistake. So make sure that you evaluate the patient before prescribing clozapine 
very, very efficiently. Otherwise, things will be compromised. This is a big, a strange table. I was confused myself. These are the enzyme system of the clozapine, uh, clozapine and glucuronide, uh, then dismethyl clozapine, ciprofloxacin, floxamine, smoking, an enzyme system of CPA12, CP3A4, CP2C19, CP1A2. Uh, as you see, the most of the arrows and the star is on CP1A2, which is the main enzyme system. But the rest of the enzyme systems are involved as well in clozapine and it's metabolized. Okay, I think that's it. Uh, question about the pregnancy. People, women especially, uh, two of the incidences I will quote my experience. So I always see that the patients are not in a, uh, in, at a stage where they can conceive. Uh, either they are unmarried or if they are married, then I have to counsel them, tell them that they cannot conceive, that the patient needs to be given clozapine therapy. Despite all the counseling that I am usually doing with my patients and telling the family and the relatives, I still had two people uh, who were on clozapine. They were having four or five children. One was having actually five children and the first one was having three children and they, they she conceived again. Both of them conceived again. And I was in a fix. I was very, very traumatized, <laughs> very traumatized. So I just thought that maybe my education, counseling of the family and the patient was not enough uh, because she should not be conceiving on clozapine. No, not at all. Uh, but and the chances of having cardiac anomalies in patients uh, have, receiving clozapine and they conceive uh, is very high. Both of them actually came to me when they were fourth to fifth month of having pregnancy. The doctors who were working with me may know some of them to one of them uh, who recently came about a couple of years ago. And she said that I'm pregnant and it's been five months and I'm on clozapine and I was stunned and I was confused what to do because uh, so we went for uh, the fetal uh, uh, ultrasound for fetal anomalies and uh, fortunately everything was okay as far as the pregnancy was concerned and she delivered a healthy baby. So it was not a problem in first case in this uh, in the second case in the first case uh, she aborted in the seventh month. But both the people were again pregnant without my knowledge of it and they came to see me after a long time uh, with a gap uh, after conception. They were stable so when the patient is very stable for two three years the monitoring is not as aggressive as it is in the beginning of first two years. So the third and fourth year are relatively easier. So I don't want to call my patients in the third year of clozapine to come and see me every month. They can come and see me every three, four months as well. And when she came in, she was pregnant and it was again. So one of them aborted and the first one continued and delivered a healthy baby. Uh, so it's 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 tricky, but it is definitely contraindicated in pregnancy and it should not be prescribed in uh, pregnancy. Now the last question, sir, can we use clozapine in bipolar patients? Yes. Uh, as such, FDA approval, uh, approval for clozapine uh, in bipolar patients is not there, but if the person is having intractable, remitting and relapsing, complicated bipolar disorder, and you have given mood stabilizers, combination of mood stabilizers, combination of multiple drugs, and their life is still compromised, this can be a choice, but this I would consider it to be one of the last resort. If nothing seems to be working, the biopsychosocial model fails and other drugs and mood stabilizers fail, which usually happens very rarely, very, very rarely. In 30 years of my practice, I believe it would probably only once I felt that this bipolar patient is not remitting because I have tried so many drugs, only one patient. So majority of the time, no, 
but yes, it can be given. It is an antipsychotic, just like any other antipsychotic, and it can be given to bipolar patients when they are resistant and remitting and relapsing very frequently, and your strategies are failing. But be careful about it. Be careful, very, very careful about it. I hope there are no more questions. Any other questions, please do ask me. चलते चलते जिंदगी के मेले में ख्वाहिशों के रेले में तुमसे क्या कहे जाना इस कदर झमेले में वक्त की रवानी है वक्त की गरानी है सख्त बेजमीनी है सख्त ला मकानी है हिजर के समंदर में तख्त और तख्ते की एक ही कहानी है तुमको जो सुनानी है बात गो जरा सी है बात उम्र भर की है उम्र भर की बातें कब दो घड़ी में होती हैं दर्द के समंदर में अनगिनत जजीरे हैं बेशुमार मोती हैं आँख के दजीर तरीचे में तुम जो सजाया था तुमने जो सजाया था बात उस दिए की है बात उस गिले की है जो लहू की खिलवत में चोर बन के आता है लफ्स की फसीलों पर टूट टूट जाता है जिंदगी से लंबी है बात रत जगह की है रास्ते में कैसे हो बात तक ये की है तखलिए की बातों में गुफ्तु अजाफी है प्यार करने वालों को एक निगाह काफी है हो सके तो सुन जाओ एक दिन अकेले में तुमसे क्या कहे जाना इस कदर झमेले में अगेन अमजद साहब एक तरफ तो मोहब्बत कर रहे हैं सेकेंडों में और दूसरी तरफ सारी जिंदगी की कहानी सुना रहे हैं ओके बट दिस इज वॉट ह्यूमन साइकोलॉजी इज Thank you very much, everyone, for coming in and listening to this lecture. Any more question? Depo antipsychotics with clozapine. Again, Doctor, uh, these are tricky questions. These are tricky situations. These are complicated situations. I won't give depo to my routine patients on clozapine unless or until again, unless or until other things have failed. and this happens very very rarely for you people all of the youngsters i believe till the time you are at my age don't go for it don't go for it don't even think of it because it's not one of the things that is possible neuropsychiatry lecture is possible oh okay neuropsychiatry are does everyone want a psychiatry neuropsychiatry neuropsychiatry is a Huge topic. What specifically you want in neuropsychiatry? Forensic psychiatry. I don't want to touch that because Tariq Hasan is already doing forensic psychiatry course. So he will kill me. Uh, Refeeding syndrome, sir, if possible. Okay. Some of the important syndromes in psychiatry. I will try to cover this topic sometime soon. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. Okay. Thank you 